to branch of point on surfaces and branch of point. Now, I can fast 
backwards. In the standard way. So that each step is a blow up along our conjugated form. So, remember we did this analysis where I can factor any map by just finding a minus one program with the algebraic quotient, looking at its R Galois conjugates, blowing down all R at the same time. So, the interest of that is to take a group of R points which are together and find over the ground field and just blow up the union. Well, so, but if I have a rational point for, say, x equals 1, What does that mean? Well, either the rational point is in the center of the blow-up, in which case the blow-up is a rational point, and I have lots of rational points in the central divisor, or the rational point isn't in the center of the blow-up, in which case I have a rational point lying above it. So in either case, I get a rational point upstairs. So if this is not empty, you can say, I have P, so let me do these things by um, so P1 to ER. It follows that <coughs> PJ plus 1, P of GP, is not it. So I just work my way up. And so in particular, we find that X of K is not Okay. I'm sorry. I heard no question. Okay. So the, the next step is we work through the classification. So first, <coughs> let me just remind you. Well let's well let's say that X is um say a bar was good. So I'll defer to, to Professor Kresh on this, but the, the 10 line theorem tells you that any bar is a very variety, if I want to the projector space. So using 10 line, this implies that X is isomorphic to P2, and you have lots of that. So the 10 line theorem implies that the Brower group of uh, any of these functions we also just did. So the ground group of C uh, is zero. So let's say that X is isomorphic to uh, quadrant. Well, again, said my here say today. <laughs> because so this is not the Because the quadrant has more variables in degree, so we can just apply this. Well, so you, when we just go through the classification. <laughs> Maybe I have to say, now we're going to just go through the classification. So let's assume that X is a product of one. So we have an X maps to C. So this is a vibration over a curve, which is geometrically P1. The fibers P ones. At least generic fibers. So in this case we just bootstrap. 
So, again, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but the 10 line theorem <laughs> implies that C of K is not equal to the empty set, which implies that C is isomorphic to P1. Over the ground. And then, if we choose a point, say T, and P1, with the corresponding fiber, And since P1 has a lot of actual points, I can certainly find one point where the corresponding fiber is smooth. So here, when the Riccati bundle has some bad fibers, there's fiber in the area where the corresponding point is smooth. Well, this is a conic, so. Yeah, but I, I have not checked all the details. Um, 
The Great Britain Earth Star Result is, I think, definitely not known for the maximum and amount of essentials of gas. So, this would be no. So the reason why the, you think this should work over the maximal unidentified extension of the Piatix is because that's a C1 field? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm using really the key facts as the C1 field. It has no ground rule. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I think I should switch directions now. And um, <clears throat> let me turn to singular that that's and by way of introduction, let's go back to the surface. I'd like to discuss what happens when the points that we blow up aren't in general position. And here I'm returning to the case when K is out of the closed. So let's say that we're given, let me recall the panel for K's resurfaces, uh, uh, for, for cubic surfaces, and just move on. We have points in case we satisfying our generosity conditions, namely the PI of the state. And note three are collinear. Note six. Then we saw that the law of P2 in these points can be embedded as a smooth cubic surface. And so my goal right now is to relax these conditions. <coughs> Why do I want to talk about this? Well, the main reason why is let's say we're analyzing the of future surfaces that varies in parameters. So I might have, well, I have five points which are fixed, and then I have a, a sixth point which is kind of marching back and forth. As that point moves, I'm going to lose the right? If, if the point crosses this line, then the two points will be collinear. So if you have families of cubic surface, there's no way that you're going to maintain the, the generosity assumption. Another issue is that I know I haven't done things over, over finite fields or fields of characteristic P, but if I take the reduction of my six points mod P, and in many cases, there will be some time where three of the points mod P, the, the reductions are collinear. So, when we, so in the cases where uh, I'm reducing mod P, or analyzing family to It's a very important example for counting natural points. 
Oh, and I should have also said, when you actually want to count rational points, it's much easier to do it on, a, on singular surfaces than on smooth surfaces. I'm not sure, but I don't think there's a, a single smooth cubic surface for which the asymptotic is proven. I'll defer to Ulrich on this. I, 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 if Ulrich doesn't know one, it's probably not an example. Um, but there are many beautiful examples of singular cubic surfaces where the asymptotic is proven. So singular cubic surfaces are much more tractable from the standpoint of counting rational points. And having an inventory of examples is really important. So here's an example. So let's start off with four lines in general position. So let me call them L0, L1, L2, and L3. And I'm also going to be interested in the pairwise intersections. Pij equals L0, L, Li, Lj. So I have six of these. All together. So I can take concretely x0 equals 0, x1 equals 0. So, here's the 
Fourth Ptolemy points when we get to trouble. So what I'd like to do now is to say systematically, so what are the good singularities? Let me try to abstract the nice properties of the example that I just looked at. So recall. that if I have a birational organism, a smooth projective surfaces, if I look at the canonical class, downstairs, compared to the canonical class upstairs, I have a relation where these are B exceptional, attracted by the morphisms of B, and the MIs are positive. Remember this, we did this computation when I was trying to construct, give you the structure of all of our actual maps in the first lecture? So, it's natural then to weaken this condition. How can I weaken the condition on positivity? Well, whenever you have a strict inequality, it always kind of begs the question, what if you relax it and allow the non strict inequality? So let me do that. Yeah. 
So for if for any morphism, sigma of x s by by rational x smoothly projected, we want that sigma of x k of x. Well, I could I can still compare these, right? Away from P, away from P, I mean, this could be an isomorphism. So I, and this is a well-defined Cartier divisor, so I can compare this perfectly fine. And the relation I want is that this is equal to a sum over I, M I, E I, where the M I is greater than or equal to zero. And the E I, of course, is our exception. Now, we have actually seen something like this before. So, coming back to this example, I erased part of it. No, I didn't. I still have my sigma up there. I called it wrong. I should call it sigma. So, notice here is that S in P3, if I just use these other formula, I still get minus a hyperplane class restricted to S, right? This is an example of how I can shoot the canonical classes in singular. And the pullback of K of X is just equal to K of X. These are both 3L minus equal minus equal. These are green. So this is an example. If 
we have minus one curves, we can just blow them down. So the proposition I, I want to discuss is that this is minimal. If and only if Kx is just equal to the pullback of Kx. This is sometimes called the decrepit resolution, which is a really interesting word. So these formulas here are often awesome. And something that isn't discrepant, I guess we could call it undiscrepant uh, or dediscrepant, but the, uh, the, 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 the literary experts have decided to decrepit. So that's decrepit, and this is a discrepant law. Okay. Not much. Um, I don't think I want to prove this, but I want to tell you something about the structure of the maps anyway. So, so I'm going to leave. I'll, I'll write this in the notes, but I'm not going to prove it with you now. But I do want to point out.
So, what can we say about the, the resolutions? Here. What can we say about the intersections? Um, of the exceptional divide.
<laughs> Good, thank you. Um, I'm, this is an example of a canonical, of canonical singularities. <laughs> Okay, I'm classifying all of them. So I'm just writing down the exceptional divisors and how they intersect. So this whole configuration has to get contracted in the resolution. So the normal form here is looks like this, x times y squared minus x to the r minus 2. And there are some exceptional cases. e6, e7, and e8, which For example, this one looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the other one that we subtain by cutting off things in the end. So I'll include these diagrams in the notes, but I don't think I want to write them all So this is all the canonical singularities that you that you will see. So I can cook up lots of cubic surfaces to have these singularities. For instance, there's a, a nice cubic surface having a d6 singular, and I know you've seen the equation for that. I was in the arithmetic geometry numbers. So there's there are exist examples of Dalpezzo surfaces having most of these singularities, d6, d7, d8, the d's are a fairly large number, the a's are a number. Now there's of course a limit on how large r can go because the Picard group can't be of unbounded rank. But many of these singularities actually show on um, limits of that <laughs> So what I'd like to turn to now is a more systematic class discussion of singular dipetal surfaces and how they arise. Singular. 
to map this, whether the blow up surface is good or bad. If I blow up four points collinear along the line, it's not going to measure Okay. I should stop. Thank you very much.